going on guys, Snag here and it's time for round 6 predictions, preview, stats, punts, all that good stuff lads. Absolutely cannot wait and this weekend is going to be a doozy and I'm smelling some upsets this weekend man. I don't know what uh, what the bookies have been smoking a little bit this weekend, some of these prices are crazy man and I can't wait to get into all these things guys. Now, just before we do get into this, KO have been good enough to give me some vouchers to give back to you guys. Anything I get from this channel, I'm going to give back, guys. Like I said, I don't. I get companies hit me up all the time. Hey, I'll give you 600 bucks to do this and do that. I'm like, well, if you can give it to my, you know, people that are watching, sweet. And like, no, we want to give you the money so you can just do an ad for us. No, bro, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. If you can't give it back to the bros, I don't want it. Keep your 600 bucks, lads. I don't want to do a dumb ad for you. All right, so uh, pretty much how you're going to win this, guys, is... So it's a $50 vet, so a free month of KO. I mean, look at this too. There's plenty of games here that are only on KO, guys. And look, I loved Channel 9. I do, and I still do love Channel 9. But once you get KO, man, it's hard to get off it, man. They've got so much good content on there every game. It's really good, man. I absolutely love it. So thank you to KO. So how are you going to win this, guys? Give me your tips. Drop in the comments. One through eight, who's going to win? So if you're going to win, just write in the comments. Knights, Bulldogs, Broncos, Seagulls, Cowboys, Rabbitohs, Tigers, Titans. Don't do those picks though, because they're horrendous. But and then let's let's go for a tiebreaker just in case we do get a tiebreaker. Let's go a one. Let's let's go a one to twelve on the Roosters and and Knights. All right, just to, if we do need a tiebreaker. All right, and then uh, with any luck, I'll be uh, posting you a little gift cardy little gift card um and i obviously just want to give back to you guys well it's been absolutely crazy man we just hit 4k it's pumping everything's going nuts and we're also we're just about to hit bloody half a million views on youtube which is absolutely insane man i mean what are we we're a year and six rounds in half a million views already it's absolutely mind-blowing and between youtube and tiktok you know five six million views a month sometimes it's it's bloody mind-blowing man so thanks to everyone you legends i love you all right, guys, let's preview these games, eh? Enough waffling. All right, we have the Knights versus the Roosters. We have the Storm versus the Doggies. Broncos versus the Dolphins. Battle of Brisbane at Suncorp Stadium. Sold out. Hell yeah, man. Absolutely love that one. It's a Friday night. Beautiful. Um, Warriors, Sea Eagles, Parramatta, Cowboys. We have the Rabbitohs versus the Sharkies. We have the Tigers versus the Dragons. We have the Raiders versus the Titans. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, let's get into it. We can have a look at the team list, guys. Now, just so I normally give three punts for the first three games. Um, I'm holding off my punt for this game just because Greg Marju is listed in the reserves and might come back. If he does come back, I'm putting Marju in here and I'm going over 36 points as well, which will probably pay out close to three bucks, two bucks, 80 maybe, three bucks sort of thing. Love Marju as a try, love that on the edge, um, love that edge, um, and yeah, I just think he might get that, uh, I think he will get a try if he's back, Kalen Pong has been so damn good, um, Marju's pretty much unstoppable, love the matchup as well, um, on Ponga, is that how you say his name, I, so I think he'll be getting over if if he's available, I just, yeah, I just, I just like Marju's chances to get over a little better than Jenkins, and if not, I might have a look at possibly Bradman Best. Maybe I might even do this one on sports bet, guys, and do maybe Bradman Best and um, Bradman Best and Ponga or something for two or more, or Bradman Best and Manu for two or more. Love and fullbacks at the moment, guys. Um, if you do want to follow all my punts as well, guys, do follow me on Dabble and Sports Bet. Monster Snag for both of them, guys. Um, I have been primarily putting my stuff down on Dabble. Um, I just like how we can comment, talk. I can put a description in it. So, for example, I won't read it out, but it, my, my last punt I did put up, you know what I mean? I, I can put a description why I'm putting the punt up and all that sort of stuff. And the copy function's really cool as well. And I actually like the banter and stuff too. It's really cool. So, But I use both Sportsbet and Dabble. I'm not affiliated with either of them, guys. I just They're just the two I use and like. So make sure you shoot us a follow on there, guys. That'll be awesome. Now... What have we got? So we've got Ponga, Jenkins, Gagai, Brabham, Bess, Tuala, Koga, Hayston, Safidi. We've got Braley still there. All right, so we're pretty unchanged. 
Tyson Gamble still not cracking the team. Um, now, Roosters, there is a bit of movement, obviously, with Dom Young, Tedesco, and Sam Walker all out. We have Joey Manu pushed to fullback. Tupo Jennings making his 300th. Uh, Suwali'i, Panga, Connor Watson, Luke Keary. <coughs> Connor Watson, oh, this is why I'm... Okay, no, I'll get to it. Um... Front row. This is what. Sorry, this is why I'm just like, why are the Roosters paying so much? I mean, I actually like Connor Watson in at six, and I think Kiri in the seven is going to play. I love him without Walker. Um, I think he plays his best footy when he's the seven. I, I don't know. I just. And then we look at this forward pack still: JWH, Brandon Smith, Lindsay Collins, Nat Butcher, Angus Crichton, Victor Radley. I mean, this is a <laughs> team on Tyrrell May coming off the bench. Um. Yeah, Tupanua, Nafua White. I don't know what the Roosters... I mean, what the... I don't know if the... Bookies know that I don't. Sometimes when I see odds like this and they don't sort of make sense, um, I sort of trip out a little bit. I mean, if we have a look at the... I mean, the Roosters are... Like, their form is... I mean, they've lost a couple, but... Was, that was that was just... Last week is just a throw in the trash game. That was trash. Coming off two losses. Robbo's going to have them fired up. I don't know. I just, I just feel. I feel like the Roosters are better than their form says, and they've still got a stacked team. And yeah, I don't know. It's just a little odd. So they're both two from five. You know what I mean? This is what I mean as well. It's not like the Knights have been shooting the lights out. Like if the Knights were four and five, I'd, I'd be like, oh, okay, fair call. Like they're, they've got a bit more form, even though the Roosters have a better roster. Knights have better form, this, that, and the other, but they're both two and five. It's it's really bizarre to me. So if you like the Roosters, even want to give the Roosters a four and a half point head start, you might get down to you know a buck ninety or something like that. Um, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, well, it just it just makes makes no sense to me. But anyway, I know I know Teddy's out, but you, you put in Joey Manu there, bro. Like, come on, man, that is absolutely insane. Uh, wins at this venue, wow, well, not many, not many wins there for the old Roosters. No, it's actually, I mean, sorry, not many games there. I would have thought they would have played a lot more games there, but yeah, pretty good win rate as well for the Roosters. So yeah, like I said, there's nothing glaring out to me why I'm like, why are the Roosters like? To me, the price should be a buck eighty to two bucks or something like that. All right, so let's have a look at some stats, guys. Knights have won eight of their past nine games at McDonald McDonald Jones Stadium. Roosters have won twelve of their past fourteen games against the Knights. Wow, see this? This this is all. All right, Knights have won their past three games. Knights have lost their past three Thursday night games. Um, Bradman Best has scored nine tries in his past eleven games. So yeah, if I don't hit, um, if Marju doesn't pay, I might chuck Bradman Best in there. Um, I think he he's look he's looking nice all of a sudden. So, yeah, but that's all we we'll wait and see. Now, as far as picks go, guys, I'm just I'm going the Roosters. I just am I am I going the Roosters? Knights have been nice at home. Give me another look at this team list. I don't want to do what I did against the Eels last weekend and go, well, if he's playing, I'll pick them, and if he's playing, I'll pick them. But I do think Marju helps his team so much, man. I'm going to go Knights just because I reckon Marju's playing. I reckon he's, I reckon they're just giving him the week to sort of get right, but I reckon Marju's playing. I reckon he's going to help a lot. You've got Jennings in the centres here. I'm going to go the Knights with this one in a real slim one, like we're talking six or less. I think it'll be um I think it'll be a tight one. Um but yeah, it's just I but having said that, I I might even chuck money on the roosters. This is just one of those games for for you guys I'm gonna I have to obviously just make a head to head tip. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say knights, scrape home. But I, I'm just so not confident. I'm so not confident. Like yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go knights officially as my tip. But yeah, as far as punting goes, I think I'm going to chuck the Roosters in there with a head start or something like that. I think that'll be just fine. All right, Storm Bulldogs. Um, all right, so let's have a look for any team teamless changes. Um, not relatively unchanged. Now, Stephen, that was Melbourne I was talking about. So Bulldogs, 
Stephen Crichton to fullback. Now, I love Stephen Crichton. I think he is a good fullback. I just don't think he's a great fullback. Oh, I love Connor Tracy at fullback. Mainly because... It's not because I think he's like way better at it or anything. Me, personally, I like this in the 2020... Well, 2022 to now, my personal opinion is I like the high-volume fullbacks. I like the, the fullbacks that have high volume. I don't like the Latrell-style fullback. I don't like the... You know, I love the guy's going to come back at a million miles an hour. The guy's going to get quick play the ball. The guy that's just going to cover a lot of territory, blah, 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 blah. Stephen Crichton, he's like, we've seen him play Samoa in the fullback role. We've seen him do all that sort of stuff. But it definitely wasn't that high volume. It was more, you know, like, he's so talented. It's just more the, I'm not saying the tr- It's more, more, you know what I mean? Like, he, the ball playing this, that, and the other. And I don't know. I, I personally don't want to, like, my, my team's really hinging on this guy. I don't want him taking big, tough carries. <laughs> I don't want him into front rowers at the start of games and stuff like that and kick returns and stuff like that. So I personally would have put Connor Tracy there, but I'm not mad at it. Like, the more Stephen Crichton's touching the ball, cool. Um, and then, look, they've still got Connor Tracy at the wing, Karaz, Sherry, and Addo Carr there. Brilliant. Matt Burton, Drew Hutchison still there, guys. Um... Now, in the forwards, I haven't seen this guy before, Chris uh, Pat- uh, Patolo, Chris Patolo, is that how you say his name? Um, sh- I'm sure it's wrong, brother, and I do apologise. Um, yeah, so we'll see if he can bring anything. We've got Bailey Howard, um, and we've got Katoga back as well, Sam Hughes, the bench, so big bench, all of a sudden, doggies have a big bench. Um, I don't know, I don't, to just be, put my hand up, guys, I have no idea who Braley Haywood is, I've never even heard of him, um, don't know if he's a, I'm assuming he's a utility, if he's a bulldog player, um, just looking at the width of those shoulders, they're not quite front rower, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say utility, second row or something like that, um, I could click on him and find out, he's got no stats, that's why I haven't heard of him, <laughs> uh, there you go, lads. Um, so Sexton's still there, still on the not being picked. Liam Knight, Jake Turpin's not getting a run. Wild, 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 wild. Um, yeah, guys. So let's have a look at some stats and have a look at the team list. Um, um, so I just, I'm just going to pull my punt up, guys. I got to. All right. So the Storm have won seven of their past eight games against the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have won only one of their past 10 games away, away games. Um, Storm have won their past 12 games at Amy Park. Josh Adokar has scored seven tries in his past nine games at Amy Park. I think most of those would have been in a Melbourne jersey. Um, Brian Pappenhausen has scored 48 points in the past two games against the Bulldogs. What? Hey, oh wait, not Melbourne Storm have scored 48 points against the Bulldogs in the past two games. Ryan Pappenhausen has scored 48 points in his past two games against the Bulldogs? What the hell even is that stat? What the hell? That is insane, guys. Wow. Man, that, I, I don't think people realise, like, just before Pappy went down, he was scoring at a crazy rate. Like, he was putting up points we had... Never seen before. Like, Ryan Pappenhausen... So, when Ryan Pappenhausen went down that year... Not last year. When he went down the previous... Not the previous year, but the previous year... Um, when he shattered his kneecap... Um, he was he was leading the league in points. Um, and it, I, 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 don't quote me. But this is around round eight. He's smashed his knee up or round nine or something like that. Right? He's leading. So, he didn't play like roughly two-thirds of the season. He still finished fifth in the league with most points scored. Do you know how insane that is? <laughs> That's how many points the bro was scored. The bro was, like, the bro was getting 20-plus a game. It was it was insane. Absolutely insane. All right, so uh, punt for this one, guys. So, this is a juicy one. Paying eight, I boosted it to 825 on Dabble. Um, I love um, the right edge with uh, Jerome Hughes back. So... Uh, Jerome Hughes and um, Elise Katoa and Warbrick. Um, so Jerome scored last week, Warbrick scored last week, and Katoa scored twice. That was against a good, like bring a pretty good defensive team in the Broncos. Um, people say no, oh, the different bro, they couldn't defend it. Like they 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 didn't do much wrong, bro. Like 
it, that edge is going to be a problem. Like I'm telling you, that uh, that edge is going to be a problem. So I've got Warbrick, Katoa, and I've got those two down as singles as well. Over 34 points for the game. Melbourne first to 13 points and even match totals because this is more than likely going to be a blowout. Um, paying 750, but I boosted it to 825, guys. I, I love this punt. Like I, I love this punt. I think this is a very good one. Um, doesn't mean it's going to hit, but I, I, I love it. I think that right edge is, yeah, it's going to be good. She's going to hit. She's going to hit, lads, I'm telling you. She's going to hit. Um, and as far as head-to-heads go, guys, um, obviously I'm going Melbourne in this one. Uh, we'll have a little look at see at the, at the team stats here, guys. So Melbourne. Um, so what? Oh, I was about to say, what the hell? How'd they play Penrith twice this year? <laughs> they had a buy, so they've only played four games. Um, so three from four, two from five for the doggies. This is the thing with the doggies. I oh, know I'm not going to go on about the doggies. Everyone's done that enough. So three from four, two from five. Completion rate, 75%. But pretty low for a Melbourne team and not too bad from the for a Bulldogs team. Like, it doesn't feel like the Bulldogs have been completing better than the Melbourne Storm this year. But they have. Tackle efficiency, about the same. So average points scored for Melbourne, 21. Average points conceded, 18. And then 18 to 19 for the Doggies. So um, defense hasn't been too bad. It's been more scoring points. has been a little bit of an issue. Um, but again, these these stats will even out a bit more after about round eight up. Uh, still need a few more games to get some good data on what's going on here, guys. Um, as far as overs, unders, I mean... If you can pick your own overs unders, I think 34 should be safe. Um, just so I usually add these two up, and that's roughly what it is. Um, yeah, I'd say over 30. I wouldn't be if the overs are like in the 40s. I probably wouldn't take it just in case it's a a one way hiding, and there, there could be a filling out process. And man, to be fair, like Donkey's defense has been, especially their um, goal line defense has been pretty good. They get torn up through the middle sometimes, long distance, but their their actual um, goal line defense has been pretty good. They've turned a lot of teams away sometimes. Battle of Brisbane sold out Suncorp Stadium. This is going to be good, man. And look at that, pretty boy Reese is back. We have Reese Walsh versus Hamaso. Well, wow, it's going to be elite. Uh, Corey Oates back. Um, Katoni Stag, Selwyn Cobo, Jesse Arthur's Ezra Man, Jock Madden. So. It was looking scary there for the Broncos a little bit. Ezra Mann hurt his knee or got cork or something at training, but he's fine. Um, if you get a bad cork, man, you can um, you can be done for a day or two. But you know what I mean? If you do it on Monday, you're going to be fine for a game on Friday. Um, unless it's a severe, severe cork. Um, um, what else we got? So we got uh, Corey Jensen, Billy Walters, Fletcher Baker, Jaden Hunt, Ricky and Carrigan. So relatively unchanged there. Smoothie. Eh. Uh, Tristan Saylor, they found him a spot on the bench, which is pretty cool. Kobe Heatherington and Xavier Wilson. So, running a relatively skinny bench. I mean, Kobe, I know he plays in the middle, but not a bit huge body. And then Xavier. So, Xavier's your only real genuine front rower in the on there. Um, I'd be getting rid of Smoothie and putting Takura or Tapao um, in. Just because... I don't think Smoothie comes on and offers anything different than Billy Walters. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Like, to me, if I'm running two hookers, I want them to at least have a point of difference. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Penrith was last year, they would have Mitch Kenny, Beast through the middle. And, then, you know, you bring on, like, a little crafty hook, uh, Sonny Luke after, something like that. But, um, hey. All right, so some changes for the Dolphins as well. We've got Hammer, Azarko, Avrilo, Tessie New comes in for Herbie, Bostock, Cody Nicarima, and Katoa. Jeez, he's flying. Jesse Bromwich, Jerry Marshall King, Tommy Flegler, Bromwich, Ewan Aiken, and jo- uh, Ray Stone. And then the bench is crazy. This is weird. We have Kerr, Nichols, Jared Wallace, all big bodies, and then a half. <laughs> Man, Milford usually carves off against the Broncos, though. I'm pretty sure he has from memory. Um, yeah, okay. Interesting. Not too sure why Milford's there. Don't know how he's been going at Cup or whatever, but... Yeah, pretty interesting, I guess you could say. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. All right, let's have a look at some statsies. Um, Broncos have scored 134 points in four con- four consecutive wins at Suncorp Stadium. Wow. 
The Hammer has scored five tries in his past three games. Jesse Arthurs has scored a try in four consecutive games for the Broncos. Wow. Um, Doms have scored 94 points in their past three games. Jesus Christ. Selwyn Cobo has scored four tries in two games against the Dolphins. Damn. All right, my punt for this one, guys. I think the Broncos get this one head-to-head, but I'm not confident at all, eh? Like, I'm really not. Like, I really, really think... Dolphins could win this, eh? I just look at their form guides and it's just they're not quite as battle hardened as the Broncos. Like, we got a horrible loss to the Cowboys, who haven't been that great. I mean, they've been pretty good, but haven't been that great. Then they've got Dragons, Titans, West Tigers. Then you go to um, the Broncos, Roosters. I know Rabbitohs are pretty trash now, but you get what I'm saying. Um, Rabbitohs, Panthers. Cowboys storm much more battle hardened, um, yeah. So I feel like they've probably just, you know, had a bit of a tougher run. But I got Broncos head. No, I don't. Yes, Broncos head to head. I have race to twenty points. Broncos, and I also have Hammer, Reese Walsh, and Corey Oates for two or more tries, guys. I believe that's paying about two. I can't remember how much that's paying. About three bucks. Now that one is on sports bet, guys. That's what I'm saying. Follow me on both because I put them up on both. Um, yeah, so it should be a cracker though. I absolutely cannot wait for this one. So wins this season, two from five, three from four. We have both... Te- oh, look, at Broncos complained about 78. I can live with that. I can live with that for the Broncos, the way they attack. Uh, completion rate, 84. Um, 87% tackle efficiency to 90%. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Um Average points scored, average points conceded, 23 and 24 for the Broncos. Wow, that's crazy. Um, Dolphins looking a lot better there with 28 and 18. But like I said, lighter competition for sure. Uh, wins at the Spenu, 5 from 10. Jesus Christ, Broncos nearly got 300 games at Suncorp. That's absolutely wild. Absolutely wild. So, yeah, we're tipping the Broncos here, guys. But like I said, I, I, I'm smelling upsets this weekend, and this could be one of them. This could be one of them. I just, yeah, I just feel like the Broncos are are good for this one. They'll get up for it. So will the Dolphins, though. So that's that's the thing. That's a scary thing. They're both going to be up for it. All right. Waz versus the Sea Eagles. What was Sea Eagles' last game again? That's right. They did the Panthers. I thought they'd just come off a good win. Um, all right. So C&K keeps his spot. Dallin is back. Rocco Berry. Did I pick him? Is this Friday night? No, Saturday. Um... Yeah, so CNK, Dallin, Rocco Berry, Roger, Montoya, Tamari Martin, he looked so good on the weekend. Sean Johnson, AFB, Wade Egan, and the hottest fucking nine in the game at the moment. Uh, Mitch Barnett, Jackson Ford, Kirk Catewell back, Torhu Harris, Chanel, Tom Alley, Tavanga, Jacob Leben. Who the hell is that? I'm trying to remember. Well, um, now let's have a look at the ends. Of, bring Woodsy back, man. So Ruben Garrick is out, guys. Um, can't remember what happened to him, but he got definitely got injured pretty bad early. So Turbo, Talao, Kola, Benchvojevic comes in to center, guys. Jackson Polo, Polo goes onto the bench. Luke Brooks, Cherry Evans, Paseca, Croker, Aloye, Olukuatu, Corey Waddell comes into the second row, Jake Travojevic, and then Carl Lawton, Bully Moore, simply Nathan Brown. Jesus Christ, Nathan Brown was a monster last weekend. Um, so in New Zealand, guys, uh, I don't have so the punts are done for now, guys. Obviously, make sure you follow me here on YouTube. I post all my punts as, as shorts as well every weekend. So I just like to keep them a little bit closer to the game just in case it changes. Um, so make sure you follow me there and TikTok as well if you want as well. Um, Warriors have won six of their past seven games at Go Media. Seagulls have not won in Auckland since 2017. DWZ has scored nine tries in his past nine games at Go Media Stadium. Tom Travojevic has scored nine tries in his past eight games against the Warriors. Um, um, CNK has won 12 of 13 games at Go Media Stadium. So I don't know what I'm going to tip this weekend, but I'm going to give you a hint. It's going to involve Tom Travojevic and DWZ score on a try. So DWZ, what I like for a try is um, with CNK back. He's that link between Johnson and DWZ to score tries. So I think that's back on now with CNK back. 
Um, and uh, also like uh, Tom Travojevic, because I'm just loving fullback scoring tries this year. They're, they're, the teams are playing a lot through the middle now, and um, I really, really like um, those two. I'm just sorry. I'm just, the reason what I'm doing is I just want to see what those two guys are paying if you put them together. Uh, margin markets, player try markets, anytime try score, DWZ, and Tommy Travojevic. That will get you five bucks if you put those two together. So that's pretty tasty. Um, you put them as singles and together. That's what I like to do. Just in case one hits, one doesn't. At least you break even. Um, whereas if you only do a multi, you're stuck. <laughs> um, all right, let's go back here. All right, so... Last time these guys played was August, so 29 to 22, and they didn't play. They only played once. So form guide Warriors could easily be five and zero right now, and um, Seagulls. It's funny what a win does. Here everyone's saying top four. Here everyone's saying what's wrong with Manly, and here they're saying now they could win the comp again. So yeah, it's funny what a week in rugby league can do. It really is. Um, it really is. Three from five for both teams. Um, Warriors completing so high, 81% to 75%. Tackle efficiency, 89 Definitely a lot better than the Seagulls. Average points scored, 22. Average points conceded, 14. For the Warriors, and average points scored for the Seagulls, 25. And conceded, 20. So, I like the Warriors. I like them at home. I just feel like... The reason why I'm going Warriors is they've been consistent the whole time. Even in their losses... Just had round one fell off in the second half. It happens. Round two, try from the gods to take it off them. Okay, and then you've got win, win, win. Whereas the Seagulls have been a bit more inconsistent. Um, yeah, and I love this win against the Panthers, but it was a clear realist Panthers. It did look like a tired Penrith team, and there was a. F I don't even don't talk about calls, but there were a few calls that went Manly's way. I mean, Aaron Woods literally came out and said he, they were wrong. So. <laughs> Plays for the manly, plays for the manly. So yeah, um, I, I like the Warriors in here, but I'm telling you now, these two teams could both be in the top four this year, and Manly could win it for sure, like for sure. Uh, but I'm tipping the Wars up the Wars. Eels Cowboys. This is this is a tricky one, and I know everyone's tipping the Cowboys in this. Um, Eels win rate without Mitchell Moses, thirty four percent. Cowboys win rate away from home since last year. It's about 34%. <laughs> Cowboys have looked good without looking incredible. They've, their record's better than their team's been. There's been a couple games where they're like, please, other team, win it. Come on, we, here's, hear it, win it, win it. And the other team's just been so poor they haven't been able to. Um... Yeah, wild. Um, so we've got some axings here. So Clint keeps his spot, obviously. Bra Bailey Simon. So Mika Sivo sacked. Well, dropped. Will Pettersoni keeps what Morgan Harper comes in. Sean Russell in the wing as well. DJ and Arcee comes in. And Dylan Brown keeps his spot at in the halves. So Regan Campbell-Gillard, Joey Lusick, Junior Paulo, Sean Lane, Bryce, Bryce Cartwright back. Huge. I mean, I, I never thought I'd hear the day I say... Parramatta have missed Bryce Cartwright. I never thought those words would ever come out of my mouth, but they they did last week. Um, Ryan Madison back to the bench. Joe Afro and Gowie Talani. So again, just a big bench, like just all front rowers and a big lock. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um, now that is an advantage. Just what um, Cowboys a little light. You know, Tamalolo's not getting many minutes. McLean's, you know, and he's on the on the down, but Griffin Neem's been pretty damn good as well. McIntyre's not bad either, but yeah, just definitely not a, it's not a pack that's going to go through you. Whereas, so Parramatta could get them in the forwards, but they, they, they got pumped last week in the forwards, and I, that was pretty poor, man. I was, it was pretty embarrassing if you're a Parramatta supporter, like, but I think, I know, I can't believe I'm saying, I, I think they've really missed Bryce Cartwright's <laughs> Physicality. Who would have thought anyone would ever be saying that? Seriously, what the hell is going on tonight? They did. Bryce Cartwright was smacking blokes last 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 few weeks. He's been well, weeks has been away. So yeah, um, look, I I thought Chad was gone for a month with that hip drop. Cool, he's not. Whatever. 
But uh, I was actually going, oh, I think Parramatta could get this one. Um, just because Parramatta, again, are really good at home. Cowboys, not great away from home. Parramatta, desperate for a win. Par- Cowboys have been... They're not overachieving because they're a really good team, but they've been winning games that are just... It's not impressive. So they, they've got a top four roster, or close to it. But it's just like... I don't, even Cowboys fans aren't overly impressed with the way they've been playing. Like put it that way. And Cowboys fans are the most hardcore fans. They're bloody hectic. Um, right, let's have a look at some stats here. Eels have won nine of their past twelve games at Combank. That's great. Cowboys have not won at Parramatta since two thousand. See what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot to like about Parramatta here, uh, other than Mitch Moses not being in this team. That's, that's it. Like, Mitch Moses isn't in this team. Uh, Scott Drinkwater will make his 100th um, appearance. Congratulations to Drinky. Um, Clint Gutherson has scored seven tries in his past eight games at Combank. Now, what time is this game? 5.30pm. So that'll be that'll be a little dark. It's not a, definitely not a day game, but it's sort of not a full night game either. And is it Combank? If this was a day game, I'd probably take the Cowboys without even thinking about it. Look, Parramatta have just looked looked so bad last weekend, and I don't think they were great against the Tigers either. Admit, I'm just really losing faith in Dillbags being a genuine superstar. He's a star, like he's so good, man. But is it like, like when he played? Like I was just going, man, Dylan Brown is going to have the craziest seat. Like he was so good for the Kiwis, man. Then I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, Jerome Hughes was. Running the ship, so maybe he is just a good Robin. Maybe, maybe there is a little bit of Luke Brooks about him, where he's just, he's not the man. He's just an awesome Robin, and that's what it's looking like, in my opinion. It's just looking like Dillbags is a, a, a real, like, an above average, like a supremely great Robin. You know what I mean? Um, that's what sort of I'm leaning to. So, two from five, four from five. There's. Parramatta's completion rate is actually pretty good. It's 82%, 75%. Um, tackle efficiency, about the same, 89 and 88. Now, points scored, 19 to 23 for Parramatta and 31 to 24. So, Cowboys are scoring. They're just leaking as well. Um, leaking a lot of tries. And Parramatta are a momentum team. Like if So are the Cowboys. Um, if you give Parramatta a sniff, they'll score three tries in 10 minutes. And so are the Cowboys. This is why this game is so hard to pick. Like... We'll probably know who's going to win this game in about five minutes. So if you like having a punt and you don't mind ring, I don't like doing it, ringing up. Whoever wins the first five minutes probably wins this game, man. So I'd, uh, let's say Parramatta get on top early and get a quick try and the odds are still nice. Parramatta's probably worth giving a quick buzz up. Like I know last year, the first five minutes, I, I caught whether Parramatta were going to win or lose every time. Like There was not, not a single game where I was like, you know, Parramatta would start slow. I'm like, I reckon they can come back here. Nah, they're not. <laughs> they're not. Um, yeah, so crazy. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to tip the Cowboys just because Parramatta have been, it was so bad last weekend. I still don't like their, their back five, oh, other than Clint. Um, RC, love him, but he's not. Light in the world on fire at Q Cup, uh, New South Wales Cup. Dillbags, not sure if he's a superstar. Whereas I, I know what I'm going to get from the Cowboys. I'm going to get some pretty good. Having said that, what's the weather like? I'm going to look the weather up before I make this call, guys. Just because I've never seen a worse rugby league team in the wet than the North Queensland Cowboys. All right, let's go. Weather, para, matter. New South. Oh, it's raining at the moment. Oh, it's raining at the moment. Is it Saturday? Saturday. Oh, Cowboys, you got away with one. All right, so the weather's going to be, yeah, like 21 degrees and fine. Cloudy, but fine. Yeah, I'm going to go Cowboys. I'm going to go Cowboys. If it rains, I'm going I'm changing to Parramatta. Um, but yeah, you see what I was talking about from the stats, guys. Like, There's a lot like... Parramatta are great at home. The Cowboys aren't great away from home. They haven't won in Parramatta about nine years, you know what I mean? So if you like para, maybe a head start, but yeah, like what I would do, like if, if just say I'm thinking on the, I would wait to set the first five minutes of the game. If para start good, then get on the blower. If Cowboys start good, jump on the blower and put some money on them. 
Mm. Rabbitoh Sharks. All right, the the axe has been wheeled here, guys. There's been some changes, so we're going to read this out. Jai Gray. Munro, Jack White and Tass, Milne, Cody Walker, Dean Hawkins. Look at that back line. And tell me if it looks anything like you thought it would look like this year. That just don't, These two dudes don't even look right in a South jersey. I know Milne and Tass have played a lot of games there, but... It just doesn't look right. It just doesn't look right. And then you look over, look to the right, and you just see Will Kennedy, Katoa, Jesse Ramian, Oro, Mulatalo, Trindle, Hines. I mean, Talakai's still in the second row. Where is he? Where is he? Talakai's on the interchange? What the hell's going on here, man? What the hell is going on here, man? Spewing if you had him in super coach. Damn. I mean, he was good, but he wasn't. Talakai? Talakai's been murdering people. What the hell is going on here, man? Wow. That's bizarre. All right, anyway. In Fitzgibbon, we trust. Um, Totola. All right, so this is crazy, bros. Damien Cook has been dropped. Damien Cook is not the problem, bro. He missed a couple tackles because your middle sucks, bro. He's been trying his ring off, man. He's been getting out from Narka and no one's been running with him. <sighs> Sean Kippy's been dropped, as I thought he should have. Dallas Duncan. <laughs> Dallas Duncan's been dropped as well. Shaq Mitchell on the interchange. Havili. Mole. Cheekam. And again, Peter Mamuzoulos. Mamuzoulos. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how to say that guy's name. I'm so sorry, bro. Playing for Souths instead of Damian Cook. I'm done. I'm done with rugby league. And I'd be done if I was a South supporter. This is craziness, man. What the hell is going on here? What the hell is going on here? <sighs> All right, guys. Rabdos have won their past seven games against Sharks at a core. It's about to change, buddy. Renato Molotalo scored 10 tries in his past 10 games. Yeah, you'll be jumping in one of my multis this weekend, brother. Rabdos are conceding an average of 32 points a game. Just to put that in perspective, guys, that's what the Bulldogs were doing last year, and it was the worst defence I've ever seen. Rabdos have won. Uh, Rabbitohs have won only five of their past 18 NRL games. What the hell is going on here, man? That is absolutely insane. I did not think we'd be having these chats five rounds into. It. All right, guys. So Sharky's got them last year. Oh, so they split it. So Sharky's got him once. Bunny's got him once. March, that would have been when Bunnies are on fire last year. Bunnies, one of their last five. Sharky's, three of their last five. Um, wins this season, one from five, four from three from four. Oh, so one of these games would have been last year, guys. Um, all right, so what have we got? Points, score points. Um, so... Completion rate, 73%. To 80. This is just 73%, so bad. Tackle efficiency, both 87. Um, average points scored from the Rabbitohs, 14 points. I've never seen it that low. Uh, average points conceded, 32. Um, average points scored, 20. And average points conceded, 18. So I was doing maths in my head just then. Um, now I'd be taking the overs in this game, I dare say, even though they're not scoring many. But, yeah, this adds up to 40, so I'd be definitely looking at the overs in this game. Um, it is a night game, but it should be fine. It should be fine. Uh, taking the Sharks to win and win well. Um, and Demetrio to probably get fired the week after. Not looking good, man. Tigers. No, Tigers. Tigers, Dragons. How good have them Tigers been? All right, guys, so where are we going? We're in the wrong spot. We need team lists. We need team lists, lads. All right, so let's have a look if anything's different. Doesn't look to be out. Naden Bateman. Farnu, Samuel. The Farnus are out. All right, so we have Bulla Stains Fatape. I think that's how you say his name. Olam, Tupo, Sullivan, Caesar. I actually didn't mind Jaden last weekend. He wasn't great, but he's better than I thought he was. Um, Big Stefano, Appy, Clemmer, Papali'i, Alex, Fornel Pol. Is that how you say his name? Fuck, I've got to get good at these 
the us's names, bro. I'm telling you, man. I need to hear them about. I need to hear commentators say their names correctly about 20 times, and then I can say them. I can't read them. That's for damn sure. It was funny once. Um, I was saying like oh, I can't remember. I just apologise for getting someone's name something wrong. And this this chick on my TikTok, this Samoan chick, but she's cool. She's she's lovely about it. But she's like, oh, small language is actually really easy. It's just an E's and A and A's and, and, and like went through it like that. I'm like, bruh, that is not easy. <laughs> What are you saying? For a dude who's grown up with A's being A's, E's being E's, and N's being N's, and T's being T's, just swapping them randomly and thinking I can pick it up is not easy, bro. <laughs> with all due respect, like I, I meant, I didn't, I didn't say that, but uh, you know what I mean. But it's, you know, like bro, I've, had, I've got Chinese mates that have lived here since they're twelve and they still can't say the letter L. You know what I'm saying? So, good luck with me changing all the vowels to A's to E's and O's to G's, and it's not happening. I'll do my best if I hear if I hear it enough, I can say it. But uh, I remember in the NBA, the first time I ever saw Giannis Antetokounmpo's name written, I was like, "What the hell is even that?" It was actually 2K. I was playing 2K, and it's just his name took up like half the screen because you know their names are below your character, and I was like, "What the hell is even that name?" <laughs> it's like three quarters of the alphabet. Oh, man. All right, so on to the Dragons. We've got Sloan, Lomax, the new Parramatta Eel, Moses Suley, Jack Bird, Ravalawa, Cole Flanagan, Ben Hunt, Molo, Little, Sele, Linu, Sua, Eisenhuth. I don't mind Eisenhuth at lock. Um, any changes here? For Mariner still on the bench. Marski, Laurie DeBellin. I liked Masilla on here, but maybe he's just not fit. These Couchman boys are good too. All right, let's have a look at some. Uh, let's have a look at looks at some stat. The stat attack. West Tigers have won one of their past four games against the Dragons. Damn, they've been battles of the spoons the last few years. Those games. Forget the battle of Brisbane. Battle of the spoons. Um, so Georgia Lawara have won three of their past four games at Campbelltown. West Tigers have lost their past eight games at Campbelltown. Jesus Christ, Tigers. Uh, Little will make his 100th appearance. Shout out to Little. Junior Tupo scored three tries in two games against the Dragons. Damn. Now, this is a coin toss game. They played last week, didn't they? I felt like the Tigers looked a little tired last week. Um, I just don't know what Dragons are going to turn up. And if I'm just being honest, other than the first game, I really liked the way Tigers have been playing, so scrap that game. No, scrap that game. I like these last three games. I didn't mind them against the Dolphins. They just looked a little tired. You could tell they just had a game where they won by one point, and it was very emotional. Whereas the Knights haven't been great, and they gave, they gave it to them. I'm going to go Tigers in this one, guys. 50% this year, two from five for the for the Dragons. 82% completions, 74% for the Dragons, 87% tackle positions. They've been tackling well, the Dragons. Um, yeah, I'm not overly confident on this one, though. I feel like Dragons could get them. Um, we'll have to wait and see, though. Wins at this venue. Oh, so average points scored, 19. Average points conceded for the Tigers, 20. And then 16 to 26. Yeah, I, I like the Tigers. I just think they've been a little bit more consistent. Dragons could just not show up for this one. And they've got players wanting to leave. They've got players meant with other clubs. And so it's just, I can't tip that, bro. I can't tip that. Raiders, Roosters, uh, Raiders will win this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching, guys. And, <laughs> oh, the poor old Titans. I don't like talking about teams when they're down. I hate all this chat about teams that are doing poorly because they need to be doing this and they need to be doing that. They're trying, bros. They're trying. It's not a very good rugby league team at the moment, man. Chevy Stewart in. That is nuts. That is absolutely nuts. Schiller was brilliant last weekend, man. Tomoko is damn near becoming one of the best centers in the game. Oh, my God. Um, Sebastian Chris was good. I reckon Savage is going to have a stinker because that's sort of how it's been going. He's going on good stinker, good stinker, and he was unreal last weekend. Ethan, Str I kept expecting him to drop one. I'm like, he'll drop this one. Oh, he caught it and made a break. Oh, okay. Um, Ethan Strange, Fogarty, Papa Lee, Danny Levi. Jesus Christ, his his stock's gone up. He's gonna 
He's going to have a nice, juicy payday after this contract. I tell you what, he's, he's elevated himself in the top 10 hookers, in my opinion. I don't know who the top 10 are, I'm just saying that. But he's, he's definitely elevated his stock. Um, Hudson Young, Zach Hoskins back. Morgan Smithies, um, Starling, Mariotta, Mooney, Salo. He was brilliant last weekend too. He held his own against Parramatta's middle real nice. Um, Jaden Campbell, Harry, Harley Smith-Shields, Brian Kelly, AJ Brimson, Jojo Fafita, Kieran Foran name, that's good. Tanner Boyd, I mean, look, I said I just said I was going to do this, but I just don't think Tanner Boyd is NRL standard. I think Tanner Boyd is a great backup. I think if Penrith Panthers lose Schneider, was that his name? And they need a backup for Cleary for the next year or the year after, Boyd Jermaine, he'll come in and do a job in that team. But in a struggling team, well, oh, nah. Big Mo, Chris Randall, Jalen Jomoth was so good last week, and David Feeder, someone's taken the piss out of him. Or, or David Feeder's head is just so big that it's made his shoulders look so bad. I mean, look at this. Look how wide Fumor's shoulders look compared to David Feeder. So someone's either photoshopped his shoulders small or given him a giant head, or, or he's just got a giant head that's made his shoulders look wide. I mean, look at Mo compared to, to Fafita. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is absolutely hilarious. Um... Sam Verrills, Aaron Clark, Isaac Liu. All right, so look, guys, let's not spend too much time on this one. Canberra have been absolutely brilliant. Um, let's do the stat attack. Raiders have won eight of their past nine games against the Titans. Titans have conceded 28 points or more in their in nine consecutive games. Oh, my God. Xavier Savage has scored eight tries in his past 10 games. Fillmore has scored seven tries in his past. What the hell? I'd barely heard about this dude, and I was so impressed with him on the weekend. He was unbelievable. Ricky Stewart has won only six of his past, uh, six of 25 games against Des Hasler coach teams. That is insane. Now, he's about to chalk up number seven, but still, Raiders win and win well, guys, 13 plus. No, Raiders win and win well. I don't think I don't like doing thirteen pluses, but yeah, I think they get this one done pretty comfortably, guys. And um, try scorers, to, I, I hit Tomoko last weekend. He's going to be, but I'd love to see Chevy get one on debut. How good would that be? How good would that be? Um, yeah, that's it, guys. We're done. So let's let's wrap it up. So who we go? We went, we went nights with zero confidence. We went Storm with 100% confidence. We went Broncos. We've gone Waz. We've gone Cows. We've gone Sharkies. We've gone Tigers. We've gone Raiders. We've gone Penny to rest up. They look tired. They need this perfect time for the buy for them. Probably the week before, to be honest. They probably want to drop the game and come back and skittle. Uh, but that's the game we play, man. That's the game we play. How cool are these jerseys, by the way? So dope. All right, that's it, lads. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.